All right, everybody, welcome to February, one of the worst months of the year. I'm basically like the Grinch of Valentine's Day, like I've just always hated it. But pushing past that, since we all eventually have to grow up and we stop liking rom-com movies because they're actually pretty cringy, I thought I would give you a couple of TV shows that actually focus specifically on relationships. That way you can get back into touch with your emotional side. So with that being said, here are my top five romantic comedy TV shows although honestly they're not really like romantic in the way that it's like you know cringy like the rom-com movies but more just navigating the world of dating and relationships with some humor thrown in there number five lovesick so to start we're just gonna jump straight into a Netflix show and now that I think about it there like a lot of the shows on this list are actually uh, by Netflix so Hats off to you, Netflix, for having good romance shows. So in this show, Dylan discovers that he has an STD. You've tested positive for chlamydia. This is your friendly reminder to stay safe out there. So he has to contact everyone that he's been sexually active with. In each episode, he tracks down one of his exes, and then it focuses on how the relationship started and ended, and how it made him grow into the person that he is, and how he has to deal with whatever consequences came with the fallout of that relationship. It weaves together these past romances with his current search for love, along with his friends' relationships who have their own issues. If you like accents, this show's for you because it's a British one. So I really enjoyed this show because I liked how the main character had to go back and face all of his exes and look back on his relationships. Because in my opinion, it's good to look back on things and see them for what they really are, not just for the good or the bad. And it can help you grow as a person. You can see what you've done wrong in the relationship or you can see just what doesn't work in your life. I think this is gonna work out just fine. It's certainly a good one. So yeah, that's me just getting deep for a second. But anyway, let's jump into number four, Love Life. So now we're going to be heading over to HBO Max for a show about, you guessed it, one's love life. This show is about a journey from finding your first love to your lasting love. In the first season of Love Life, it's very similar to Lovesick in that it follows the different relationships of Darby throughout her journey to find love and how the people you're with and meet along the way shape you into who you are when you finally find that special someone. God, I feel so cringe just saying that. The second season follows Marcus after his divorce and his journey to move on and find a new connection even though it may seem helpless at times. Like I said, the two seasons followed two different people, so you'll recognize Anna Kendrick in the first season and William Jackson Harper in the second season who played Chidi on The Good Place. So if none of that really sounded interesting, hopefully you'll give it a chance just to see these people. He's back in New York, apparently, which I would have known if I hadn't unfollowed him, and then I wouldn't have been blindsided wearing Crocs. Ew. Number three, you're the worst. So this show focuses on two toxic people, Jimmy and Gretchen, who hook up at a wedding and end up falling for each other, so they make an attempt at a relationship. This is gonna end so badly. I know, right? This leads to many funny circumstances and also a lot of fights, but in the end, can they make it work? So I really like this show because I think it's more in line with what actual modern dating is like and hookup culture. City boy, city boy. And it isn't all like lovey-dovey like other romantic comedies. Guess what Paul's definition of love is? What? Putting someone else's feelings above your own. Ew. 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 It shows how people can be in situationships and self-destructive and not ready to be in a relationship but still fall in love and how hard it is to make it work. So the actors also do a very good job portraying their uh, uncaringness. But if you don't believe anything I'm saying, it has a 95% on Rotten Tomatoes, has crazy good reviews so if you care about that stuff then this show's for you what do you heard about me nothing just that you're the worst says the girl who just stole a blender from a wedding oh man thought it was a food processor number two love Back to another Netflix show. I even rewatched this one like less than a month ago just because I watched it before I watched anything else on this list and I wanted to make sure that it was still as good as I remembered and it was. Anyway, love focuses on Mickey and Gus who form a connection and try to navigate their feelings towards one another when they're almost polar opposites. Gus, who is the nice guy, and Mickey, who is the bad girl, can't deny that they're drawn together, but they have trouble overcoming their personal issues, which heavily influence the state of their relationship. In the end, they both have to realize they aren't perfect and have to work on themselves in order to make this work. I love this show. 
Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's not my best joke ever, okay? Just don't judge me. So yeah, I like this show because it kind of hits love. I didn't try that time, okay? So I like this because it hits love from like every angle. So Mickey has addiction problems and um, a lot of her problems are very apparent on the outside while Gus has more like internal uh, issues, if you will, that aren't so apparent. So it's very nice because it shows how these different um, personalities kind of interact and how both of them have a lot of stuff to work on and how they can negatively affect a relationship while also showing how they can positively affect um, the other type of personality in a relationship. So yeah, the characters and the situations are super relatable in this show and you should definitely check this out no matter what personality type you have. Where are you from? Brookings, South Dakota. My mom always tells me I should date a Midwestern boy because they're really sweet and honest. Oh really? Well, uh, tell your mom to go fuck herself. I'm kidding, it's a joke. Okay. So this wouldn't be one of my lists if I didn't make a couple honorable mentions. So first, How I Met Your Mother. Now the reason this show is here is because it fits the category of like navigating the dating world, trying to find your significant other, also being a comedy, but it just felt different in terms of it is a sitcom while the other ones aren't that. So that's why this landed here, but I still love it so much. I watched it for the first time a couple months ago and I just watched it all. I didn't have to take a break between like the 200 episodes. I just watched it and I loved it. I feel like I don't really need to say a lot about this show because a lot of people probably already know about it. It's basically about Ted and his journey to find his significant other and all the relationships uh, he goes through on the way. It also shows how people who aren't as love driven explore their relationships as well as couples dealing with their relationships. So yeah, the humor in this is just spot on with like what I like. So if you like my videos, you should watch this if you haven't. Hi, have you met Ted? Next, I thought I would mention the Netflix show Crashing real quick. It's super short, only six episodes. So if you're looking for something to just like watch in one sitting, this would be your show. It's about a group of people who live in an old hospital who are basically living there for cheaper rent. The main story is about a guy who's engaged, but one of his friends that he grew up with shows up and they have to deal with their unresolved feelings for each other. Will he choose this girl from his past or will he stay with the girl he's engaged to? This is gonna be a disaster, isn't it? I do also want to mention that this is a very British show. Like, I don't, I don't actually know how to explain what I mean by that, but if you've ever watched The Inbetweeners or the original Office, it's just kind of different. It's not really different, but it's just kind of different. And it's not for everyone. So I just thought I would mention that before you jump into it. Also, I've been told that my famous doppelganger is the main dude. So if you want to see more of me, I guess, you can also watch this show. All right, the moment you've all been waiting for, my number one pick, Master of None. So we're back at Netflix again, and it's Aziz Ansari's show. Now I know some of you might not like Aziz Ansari, but I think you should definitely give this show a shot. Dev, who is 30 years old and lives in New York, is trying to figure out his life, his career, relationships, and if he wants kids, and all those other just, you know, life questions that we have. We see him go through ups, downs, and every awkward moment in between. This show is similar to a lot of the other ones on this list in that it shows Dev going through different relationships, trying to find someone that he connects with. And while the other shows do a good job feeling real and relatable, this one just hits like a all new high of relatability. On all things really, whether it's like love and relationships, just like life stuff you're going through, simple things like finding food. If you love food, this one really hits hard on just finding good food. There is also a side third season, but it definitely has a different feel. It's much more heavy instead of on the comedic side. So just be aware if you want to watch that one as well. So that's my list as always. Let me know what you think. Let me know your favorite rom-com show, movie. Just say hi to me in the comments. I don't care. So stay safe with all the love in the air out there and I will see you all next time.